am super excited to introduce our main speaker today. So Sebastian Moreno Vaca of A2M was a founding member of A2M and leads the firm's regenerative design for a decarbonized future. And since starting A2M in 2000, Sebastian led it to international recognition through his knowledge building and sustainable practices and his long tenure as the president of the board of the Belgian Passive House Association. Since 2006, he's also been teaching architecture at ULB University in Brussels. In 2009, he co-founded and edited the magazine that maybe some of you guys have seen called Be Passive. And A2M, his firm is headquartered in Brussels and has offices in Lisbon and in New York through its sister company, M2A. Thank you so much, Sebastian, for joining us today. Thank you, thank you, Beverly. Um, okay, I'm gonna start. So as you can tell, um, I'm really far from uh, being a English native speaker, but I'll do my best, of course. Um, I'm start sharing the screen. I hope it's working now. Okay, so let's start. Uh, I'm going to present you a couple of slides of two retrofit or renovation, or I don't know how you can call. One is uh, how we are doing now a retrofit from a former office building to residential on a large scale. It's here in Europe. The second one, it's a retrofit of a very iconic building from the 60s, uh, but you will see. First, a, a very tiny introduction. Yeah, this is thanks to Roger Waters, you know, from Pink Floyd. Um, so we, we are coming from, uh, Beverly mentioned it briefly. Um, Zach, too, is, we are coming from a country where Passive House is, is in the code since uh, eight years now. So today, whether you like it or not, are you against or for any kind of scale of destination, whatever it is, new build or retrofit must achieve Passive House criteria since, yeah. 2015. So that's in the code anymore. So there's no more certification because it's it's a it's a local law. Okay. And if you don't like it, you have to build on another on another country, another place. But okay, fine. Um, and in all that, because we we are just an architect firm, uh, we are approximately 45 people, uh, split in three in three location, as Beverly mentioned. But we do all kind of projects, a lot of design and build with builder, sometimes result build and, and finance. Uh, the only thing is, as architect, we have in sources since a long time ago, actually since 2003, so we're very old, uh, all this knowledge about building physics, uh, et cetera, passive house, et cetera. And we decided in 2007 that we will do only but passive house 100% or we do nothing. Hopefully, it was still there, so the or nothing didn't happen. <laughs> but it's all kind of destination, as I explained, new, uh, new build or you know, or retrofit, uh, large scale, small scale, um, school, housing, office, affordable housing. Uh, since years, very long time ago, we, we do a lot of trainings, conference, uh, sometimes masterclass in some uh, universities here and there. Um, together with, with Sean Santamo, we did that huge uh, event. It was called the Ice Challenge, which was a crazy impact. It was in New York, but that's New York, and he continue all over the U.S. So we have spread a bit all over. Uh, one of the things is uh, when Passive House became the code in our country, uh, we, we were already going beyond, and we discovered that actually to do a Passive House is not the goal, absolutely not. It's just a tiny or a huge one first step, but you can go way more beyond. And as soon as the market starts to distress, where passive house is just no big deal. That's just nothing. Just just a building. Who cares? Of course, your energy bill is going to be reduced uh, uh, of more than the ninety percent. Huh? If you have an apartment, your heating cost is going to be uh, as much as as, as you start back a month. If you are in New York or maybe in Seattle, it's a bit more cold, but whatever. So this is we discovered that is it's very easy to go way more beyond and very very fast. Otherwise, it would have been boring. We discovered that why don't we try to do project that will regenerate the environment and not only just limit your impact, but can you do development that if you don't do it, it's worse for the climate, it's worse for the planet, worse for the environment. So can we go that far? And in between, we had the COVID and, and the second crisis, which is going on with the war here in Europe, um, has shown us that really uh, <laughs> it's a direction that you know cannot come back. So one of the things that when we have integrated all these skills and knowledge about building physics now we use that even we play with this algorithm in grasshopper so it's parametric design so all the dynamic simulation we start always with uh, 
with the static calculation of PHPP, of course, but all the rest is used and we take the result in dynamic simulation. It's kind of a loop of iterative loop that is, is now even reverse, not only to make a survey or to test are we passive house, are we okay? Is gonna building be going to be comfortable, but it's we reverse everything and we use all these tools, actually that we, we still to engineers uh, to produce buildings or sexy narrative. So here it's all about two um, typical rehab because it's most of the story of uh, most of Europe. Some buildings are a thousand years old, so you can imagine. And uh, because Europe won't be uh, one of the first uh, CO2 neutral continent in the world, uh, we have no way to achieve it, but fine. Um, it's all about rehab really mostly. Um, so one of the one of the process we do, because sometimes you start with an existing fabric, an existing building, and it's not that easy to go uh, to a 475 EBTU or even to zero energy or even to be self-sufficient because that's something new. We do now projects that are completely unplugged. Uh, yeah, self-sufficient, not only in energy, but in water. That's going to be another talk another time. So what we do, we do a kind of a, a sort of a roadmap with uh, typically some step-by-step uh, -step, uh, uh, zone that we're going to we're gonna work with. And to see that wherever you stop, we can continue Whenever you want, the idea is this, as soon as you change an element of the building, whether it is a house or, or a high rise, we don't care. The idea is that you don't have to change it anymore for a hundred years, please. There's the lack of resources now. Uh, so the idea is if you need a triple pane glazing to achieve one day a passive house or to be one day self-sufficient, you do it. If you can't pay it, please don't install uh, just a stupid double pane glazing that's going to mortgage your, your project. So this is typically how we work with this kind of kind of roadmaps, how to be from zero to be one day completely self-sufficient, from existing to one day self-sufficient. You stop where we can with investment and we continue when we can. So that's the minimum. In, in uh, renovation or, or retrofit, there is mainly two big families of uh, retrofit because it's all about envelope. Envelope design, this is why uh, architects should be uh, what we do. Uh, and without engineers, we should do it all in-house. So whether you can remove the existing envelope, which is some project you can do that. And some project you have to keep the existing envelope. On the first one, if you can remove the envelope, it's like a new build. So there's no big deal. That's just like a regular building. If you have to keep the envelope, you have the choice to insulate from the inside or from the outside. If it's from the outside, you cool from the inside, Sometimes you have to do it, especially with landmark. In England, we would say listed building, but it's landmark that you cannot touch, etc. cetera. Um, here, we're going to present to uh, you a kind of, uh, it's an in-between where we had to keep slab and bearing walls or bearing structure from the 60s because it's iconic, as I say. It's a landmark, so it's not that you can change it or remove it. There's no way. So I'm going to present you two extremes, the one on the left and the one on the right. Of course, you have all kind of situation, all, all kind of scales. The, so the very first one is here on the left. It's a project from late 80s. Um, we just uh, have done now the building permit. So we are going to uh, to the building, actually. It's a pretty minus a large scale, you will see. It's uh, a bit more than 200 square feet. Uh, and the second one, it's a, it's a bank. It's a huge bank uh, from uh, ING Bank. It's a group from uh, Holland, and they... The idea is to retrofit. We are in construction now, a building from the 60s, you will see. Uh, it's a very, very large one. It's a half million square feet. Um, so the first one, the office building is going to be changed into a residential. The idea is, of course, because everyone who built or retrofit, whatever you do, no matter what, can be any kind of destination in our country. It's passive house. What are you going to offer more? So now it's very easy to to do uh, and to go beyond to not only zero energy, that makes sense, we want to pay, we want to pay a bill to, for en energy, please, but to go to CO2 neutral, that's the minimum. So here you don't have even to convince developers or yourself, you just do it, that, that makes sense. So the building is here, it's a building from the, as I said, from late uh, 80s, it's uh, uh, an institutional building. Uh, Brussels, it's a bit like Washington DC, we have all the European institutions and they are here. And uh, they are on the suburb of the city. Um, it's a pretty minister large scale. And they're going to quit the building uh, this year. So we're going to start the work next year. So the idea is we had uh, 
more than 20 kbtu and we're going to achieve 3.5 just a bit less than 4.75 uh, of course so you see so that's the building i'm not going to uh, take your time with all concept and why and, and and so forth but the idea is that it's the building in the 80s it was all about cars so you have like i don't know 300 cars in, in the underground which is crazy so we reactivate part of the underground to put uh, uh, like a fitness center so or typically what you have when you have communities like co-livings and so on but that, that's just for for the fun um, the idea is we always start here with, with the existing fabric and structure but uh, nowadays, and it was nice that COVID passed, well, not for some reason, but some yes, is that everyone want to have 100% uh, outdoor uh, spaces, whether it is affordable housing, residential, high-end uh, condos, office building, everyone want to work outside, they live outside, even if it's freezing like hell or the, the, or the contrary with heat waves. So the idea is it's very easy to integrate terraces in the existing structure, but you have to remove the former curtain wall. The thing is, because of the structure, we have beams on the facade, and it's not possible to hang uh, terraces on the outside without removing all the interior slab, which is which is insane. So what we propose, instead of doing that, which sometimes it's possible, but here it's crazy, we said, look, why don't we add kind of, a, of exoskelet, a bit like an Iron Man, you know, <laughs> a very performant Iron Man, uh, along all the building to, to have the possibility to put as many um, facilities as we want, could be uh, low just bow window, uh, greenery, trees, terraces, vid, whatever kind. Then we create a kind of a, a ring along uh, all around all the building with activated zone. So that was the, the former building. That's the, the the crown, I would say, all around the building that is activated, uh, and we increase by that uh, maybe. I mean, 15 percent, 30 percent of the the surface that you're going to put on the market for the developer, it's fantastic. So that was the former building, how it was since uh, 1988, and this is how it's going to be split in different uh, apartments. Okay, so that that is the existing, and this is how it's going to be, uh, let's say, in two years. Again, here how it is today. The former one, which is on the left, it's another famous architect in Belgium who retrofit an office building into housing, so into dwellings. So this is how it's going to be. Um, again, here is on the left. We are in resident residential uh, suburb, I would say. So it's really how to reactivate not only the envelope but also the, as I said here, the the basement, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So apart from that, a bit of uh, building physics. Two two slides. I'm not going to bother you with that. Uh, but one of the things is the way structure were done in the 60s, 70s, 80s, they are very poor in structure. So it's not that you can add extra load and so on. So that's design pH. Uh, so we used to work with panelized system that you used to in the US, all over the US, in Canada, which is cool. In Europe, part of Europe can do that, but part cannot. So we are in a zone where it's complicated, but nevertheless, we, we can do that. It has to be fire resistant and so on. So you just plug um, extra... Um, Panelized system, we did that here on a high rise. It's over since a few years already. So it's very easy um, to clad and to bring a completely very high end um, envelope. We are talking about an R value, uh, just a bit more than R50. Triple pen glazing, uh, when the market starts calming down here, we can find now triple glazing at the cost of a double glazing that you could find in any stupid shop at in any corner. So now it's just it's it's nothing. You see, it's yeah, it's triple plane. Yeah, so what? With, with with help for the cost, because again, all these buildings, the idea is to do a retrofit at the same cost than if it was a business as usual. It means like a stupid renovation, but it's going to be a bit more than passive house. That's a high rise, just to give you an idea how it was. Um, and then we add some extra floors. Then, um, and the funny thing is uh, in circularity, reuse, that's something was just fun or for, uh, let's say, uh, for, for, to save the planet or whatever a few years ago. And actually just a bit before war started and it happened at the end of the first two years of COVID, we had in Europe a huge lack of wood. There were no more wood available in all over Europe and every builder accelerated that lack of resources by try to store as much as you can wood. <laughs> so it was completely crazy. You could, you could not even, even in, 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 in markets, in supermarket, you could not find any wood in, in all over Europe. It was crazy. So this is kind of uh, going to reuse of material. It helps also in a world that we were in a finite world. 
it was not as much as in the US where we think everything is infinite and it's going to be forever. Here we face a bit faster than foreseen, lack of everything, steel, aluminum, steel cost like 300% of uh, the cost. It was uh, three years ago or two years ago, same for aluminum, gas explodes, so it's crazy to produce glass. So everything comes to an end very much faster than foreseen. So here, that's a new way of doing a slab with a, you, you, you recompose a floor. It's kerto, it's a kind of multi-layer. And we install that into steel. Um, so you see here, the, that's a survey of some of our uh, European Code Institute that for years we had no really extra cost. And here it exploded and since, uh, so Putin came here, like in February here, and it accelerated the, yeah, <laughs> the end of resources. You So now you have to go to reuse. This is the steel, that's the aluminum cost. So it's really uh, complicated. And reuse was already done for... Uh, finishing or interior, like carpets, I don't know, flooring. But what is very new, and that's the first in Europe, I mean, in our continent, is to use a bearing structure that we could find on another country in St. Holland, in the Netherlands. Uh, so you need some special test to reuse them and so on because you have to be fire resistant, etc. So this is completely reused. And actually, the builder could buy the steel at uh, 40% of the cost uh, compared if you would have buy it to ArcelorMittal or one of the big uh, international uh, steel producer. So that's the idea. So for if when the building is going to be over, like in two years, um, we're going to have a kind of CO2 reduction of uh, approximately 50% compared to uh, his life. He was today. It included all. We calculate that on 60 years. There is a code that's coming from England, if they're not part of Europe, that when you calculate CO2 neutrality, you have to take into account 60 years of uh, of uh, running uh, cost and running uh, emission uh, yearly, plus the the change, the life cycle of all the materials, etc. So we calculated that this is the building at the scale of uh, yeah in, in the master plan in that part of the city. So the savings because we change it into a, a bit more than a passive house. It's uh, close to zero energy. It's as, as much as close to 200 tons equivalent of CO2. That means nothing, but it's equivalent to a park the size of almost 90 acres, which is in our country or in our city, it's like uh, three times the King's Park if it was a forest that size that we're going to save per year. So the second one, it's a uh, very uh, iconic uh, retrofit, which is running. The one I said is a half million square feet. And here, it's a very, very complicated project to retrofit. It's the bank. Um, I don't know if someone in the audience know who is this guy here uh, smoking here. That's really back in the days. Well, you don't have to answer. But this is a Gordon Bunshaft, uh, the famous Gordon Bunshaft from SOM in the 60s. Just after he did some uh, very iconic building like Chase Manhattan Bank in New York, here the Yale's Banker Library and so on, he was one of the first to use this uh, bearing structure on the outside and to make the, the design of the building. So he did this building, that's a picture took um, in 1964, precisely. You see that with the car, we, we are like in a movie like Flint or James Bond, you see it's very fantastic. So he did a fantastic building in, in Brussels for the bank, so they're still there. It's, it's an an amazing project. So you see, so it's it's still today one of the most modern building ever, most iconic. So the idea is to completely retrofit it, not only to passive house because that's nothing. Okay, you just put insulation and so on. But how do you manage all these miles of uh, thermal bridge, etc.? And is it possible to go to sea neutral, etc.? So if I ask, it means of course that we can. But you see, we had an, an, an heating demand which was like a uh, huge. Uh, 32 kbtu and we're going to be part is going to be beyond 475 and some are going to be five you will see so th this is the building today so the building of the 60s is the the main one on the we are in the city center the king's palace because we have a king my god uh, <laughs> is here so he's facing the king actually and they did an extension in the uh, beginning of the 90s and that was so again so some came back and they make a mirror of, of, of the former iconic, fantastic building. So that's the building of the 60s, the one of the 90s. But today there is a lot of, of um, well, misuse of this one is not that transparent anymore. For, there is a lot of things. It was an international competition. So we propose, okay, we're gonna try to bring Bunshaft to not only passive up, but to zero 
no more impact. And also to try to bring light in these very deep buildings, which is which is a problem. Sometimes we, we see that in New York, when you have to retrofit office to residential, it's too deep, it's not that easy. So it's one of the cases here. And it was also, so how can you be innovative again? Because in the 60s, what he did was, was really avant-garde, huh? or cutting edge signature. But how do you do that nowadays? And I have to tell you that in the competition, there were some very famous, every time you do competition, now we are facing uh, everyone, like Snoheta, Omar, uh, all the big superstars, my goodness. Um, and some of them proposed to, to make a new building here and so on. So we were very respectful. Who are we, you know, <laughs> to touch the, 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 the bin shaft. But we tried to, we proposed to explode the building from the inside. It's going to be there, but we're going to make holes and make lights coming because it's going to be brand outstanding, which is the highest standard you can have. And well, platinum, well, from the US, you know, and bring a greenery all over the buildings, open completely the ground floor and the basement to create a kind of super duplex with super common, et cetera. So instead of former way of using offices, it's going to be completely open all over. And now when you go in a bank, normally you come, you have to present your ID. It's like freeze, don't move, who are you? Here, the ID is the opposite. When you're going to go there in the future, within, you're going to be end of this year, actually. You're going to be welcome with the barista. Ah, do you want a coffee? Hello, welcome, etc. So it's completely an open house. That's a bit typically from uh, Holland. <laughs> Everything is open. So that's the idea. Um, and of course, they're going to have more uh, confidential zone. But that's the, the idea. We have going to have like 300, no, 3,000, up to four people working here. Uh, so they need a way. Why would you come back to work after the COVID? So that's really the idea. So you see here the, the duplex going down, going to the basement. That's a 3D. It's a render. How is going to be? And also because the, the the banker who did that project back in the days with Bunshaft, they also integrate, like uh, David Rockefeller did, that integrate art all over the building. So we can create a kind of, uh, from the inside, uh, it's completely open top to, to down, like uh, if you would be in a moment. So that's kind of a rendering with forum where everyone can meet, et cetera, et cetera. Again, the same batch of uh, iterative loop of uh, tools, um, but we use a bit more than just the static calculation of the PHP. There is a lot done with uh, the light uh, glare, the light autonomy, et cetera. All that is pretext how to open here and there all the buildings, because the idea is to have a very, very, very high end. Uh, comfort inside with natural lighting and so on. And then the management of um, of these mics of Thelma Bridge, I'm going to show you briefly. Yeah, that's uh, uh, pH design. That's uh, dynamic simulation, the IES. So all that is done in-house, of course. That's the rendering how it's going to be. Um, we use also because it's a building that has a kind of a layer. It's kind of a tranche milanaise like a cake where you have uh, hundreds of, uh, of uh, slices. Here we have 60 years of... Uh, of cabling elements, one on top of the other. So the, the augmented reality is very much used for the technique. So this guy here is one of the site uh, managers, site construction managers. It has nothing to do with high-end rendering, but they use that uh, augmented reality glove, you know, that you put. Uh, so that's something that we use more and more in projects. It's not, not yet like that. That's for movies like, uh, <laughs> I don't remember the one with... Uh, uh, yeah, from the film, uh, from a book from Philip Dick, but okay. So there is a lot of uh, attention done of how to bring uh, biodiversity, the water, which is managed on site, 100%, etc., etc., etc. et, cetera, et, cetera, et cetera. Um, solar panels and so on. But the thing is, I'm going to just show you one detail of the envelope uh, and one extra. So, of course, it's all about how to manage this thermal brick because unless... All our friends from Build VC system that, and we were do, saying that years ago, you can live with miles of thermal bridge if you have no condensation and you have it heating and cooling demand uh, lower than 475. And then we don't care that we have thousands of thermal bridge. So, one of the ways we do it here actually, we trap it's kind of, of overlap. Here is cellulose, and above it's a wood, wood wall actually. We put a new uh, triple pane, and with that, the the 56 degrees, it's here, so we're never going to have condensation. Of course, you're going to have heat losses, but this is why on floor, on, on uh, the, the triple pane, is a very high uh, level of, of, um, of uh, uh, the, the R value. So you see here, the, it's almost over for all these thousands of windows that we had to do as it was in the 60s. 
um, and then you have the rice flow here and the connection that has to be um, airtight. So we use most for Klima, all the same products we have all over all over the world, actually. So there's no big deal. Come on, it's too easy. Now we put the, we have put the rice uh, floor and there's some trick because of course this project, even if it's huge, large scale, is going to cost uh, well, the building is over. We are working. Uh, site construction is started uh, a bit less than a year ago, but we are at exactly the same cost than a stupid renovation or a business as usual renovation. Absolutely no one dime more. And of course, it's a bank. They're not going to put more because it's passive house. No way. Or CO2 neutral. Come on, give me a break. It has to be or the same cost or cheaper, of course. And there are some tips and tricks. Uh, I can explain you some if you want. Then some very huge tips and tricks for that. Um, and of course, because it's so crazy, it's an enormous scale. So there is a lot of uh, tests that it's done uh, regularly every month of uh, according how far you are with the envelope with these, uh, sometimes just blower door, sometimes blower door with infrared, sometimes smoke and blower door, which is a very easy. And here you see that the, even the subcontractor who does that himself all along the, all along the, the site construction evolution. So that's one of the very easy way to make controls. And, and again, today it's normal. Every builder has that in-house. Um, so these openings, this is what we meant by, by opening all the buildings uh, top to bottom. So you see that's a picture took um, last month, actually. Um, these are all the forum all along. They're going to cross all the building um, just to have these kind of things uh, in a bank. So it's a kind of, it's a kind of like, uh, even you could be a co co-working actually. That's very funny for banks. Uh, the last thing I'm going to show you, it's a, it's a gadget. It's actually what we call the, the cheese on the cake. But when the cake, it's okay. You can start playing with some cheese. Uh, cheers. Uh, uh, yeah, the cerise, uh, cheers. So here it's, um, uh, we, do, we do need to um, clean the, all the concrete uh, elements that are outside since 60 years because we are in a deep zone in Europe where you have a lot of, of gas it's a bit like, like in, in, uh, in, uh, in downtown New York, <laughs> which is full of gas of NOx. So we use a treatment on the facade that it's, uh, we call that a photocatalyzer that cleans, that not only cleans the concrete, but also, uh, also gonna catch the NOx and uh, cut them and, and separate them into an, an, alley, an uh, salt. So you see the map of Belgium, that's Paris, that's London. So we are all on, on the fog, like in Manhattan, but okay, fine. And that's the zone. So it's really full of this NOx gas. So this building, when we say it's going to behave like a forest, is exactly like a forest. It's going to clean the air, strict or sensu. And again, that helps to increase the CO2 reduction yearly. So it, it's uh, close to 75%. And because of the scale of the building is as much as the forest of the size of the municipality where, where, where the building is, with only one building. This is the savings we're gonna, we're gonna have every year. This is why we say, again, another rendering. And now to end, we can say, yeah, it's cool because Brussels, you have the passive house code for everyone. It's like a local law. But um, and, and, and in our country, like, like your president, uh, that was two years ago, uh, when he said, I wanna be a uh, social neutral, Europe is going to be so neutral. We say, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, of course, of course. So this is how we are now since the passive house law came into effect. So we had a drop of CO2 emission of all the, the country. That's true. But to achieve CO2 neutral by 2050, we have to do more. And on the size of our region, we should retrofit two dwellings in passive house per hour, nonstop from now until 2050. And even if it's in the code, we are far from that. In New York, <laughs> New York, we have not we have a local law which is fantastic already, uh, but we should to achieve a, a New York CO2 neutral by 2050 retrofit at the minimum 15 dwelling or house per hour nonstop from now to 2050. So no way. This is why as that's quite in Tarantino, you know, we're far from from okay. That's the lack of oil worldwide because since the war everyone start wondering the US is here so. Anyway, <laughs> there is no more oil. I'm sorry. Same for Canada. Um, that's uh, Europe. And, and uh, we have Russia here. So one day or another, we're going to have to be fossil fuel free. Gas is not that good. In orange, it's still um, is what we call shale gas, which are very bad for the planet. So natural gas also comes to an end. That's the world um, resources we have, which is known and uh, unknown. So it means that whether we like it or not, 
we come to an end at the moment. And we should, to achieve a world which is going to be so to neutral by 2050, we should achieve a CO2 reduction worldwide of 5% each year. You know when it happens in our story, in the story of us all, it happens only three times. Last time was two years ago during the COVID. It means if we want to have a planet CO2 neutral in 2050, we, we should have the same impact than the COVID every year, non-stop until 2050. We are very far from that, very, very far. This is why we say, please, if you go to Passivos, first go beyond, but don't ask, just do it.